Hello and welcome to The Print. Today we have with us one of the biggest names in women's football, as well as an inspiration to many refugee girls across the world. 34-year-old Nadia Nadim, pro footballer, and also now a qualified doctor. Nadia, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Great. For those of you who don't know, Nadia escaped with her family from Afghanistan in 2000 at the tender age of 11 after her father, an Afghan National Army general, was unfortunately executed by the Taliban. But upon fleeing to Denmark, Nadia has donned about 98 international caps to her name in terms of football. And she's also represented clubs like Manchester City and PSG. She's also the ambassador of NGO Danish Refugee Council, also known as DRC, which advocates securing sustainable solutions for refugees and displaced people. So Nadia, you're a pro footballer, now a qualified surgeon. What's next on the list? Um, well, good questions. I mean, um, I still have two-year contract with my um, new team um, that I'll sign with this summer in the U.S. Um, so my goals uh, in terms of sports are obviously to, you know, win the league in the U.S. And then um, there is the Euros coming up in England with the national team. And we want to do great there as well. Personally, um, you know, becoming a doctor is a big achievement. The reason I wanted to become a doctor is because I wanted to help people, especially the ones who are in need. Um, and yeah, have an impact or, uh, on, you know, anyone I can. Now, I know it might sound very big, uh, but step by step, I'll do my best and let's see what's going to happen. So did you always want to be a doctor or was, was it, no, I want to be a footballer first? <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, I wanted to be rich when I was younger <laughs> as a kid. So I, I thought I'll be in finances. Mm. But you know how Asian moms are? Um, uh, she's like doctor, lawyer, engineer, or a disappointment. <laughs> uh -huh. I think we uh, need a little bit to that. Uh, yeah, basically. <laughs> um, but, but then around um, uh, when I had to apply for the university, I had a couple of years previously had internship at the private hospital because it was close to my home and I had I could um, sleep in longer. That's what you do. In ninth grade in Denmark, you have one week where every kid can experience a workplace. And usually people choose areas that they're interested in. I chose the hospital because it was close to my home and and that way I could sleep in longer. Um, but then I thought it was very cool. You know, it was very, very interesting to see the connection with the patients, the effect that you have, the impact that you have on people. I thought that was amazing, you know. And when I was, uh, I was applying for the university, uh, that was the only thing that kind of came up my, my mind. And I was like, this is it. I think I'm going to apply for med, med school. And I haven't regretted one tiny bit. It's been the best thing ever. I love being at the you know, operation rooms. I love, as I said, the impact that you can have. And also the knowledge that you gain, um, how the body works. Um, and then, yeah, and as I said, I'm looking forward to do my best uh, to serve people who, who, who need some help. In fact, um, uh, you come from a family of very strong women. You have four sisters. One is a doctor, two are nurses. One is a professional boxer, if I'm, yeah. I hope I'm not wrong in stating those. Correct. No, that's definitely correct. Um, yeah, um, you know, I, I, the reason um, we're all women, which is, yeah, um, which, is, which is fun, um, but also after fleeing Afghanistan, it was very important for us um, to make something out of life. Uh, just because, you know, we've been given a second chance and you, you're you a place where all the opportunities were there. The only thing you had to do is kind of basically grab the opportunities. Of course, it's not easy. You have to put the work, the hours, the hard work in it. Um, but I think everyone did in my family, you know, uh, my mom is super proud. I'm proud of my siblings um, and, and we are far from where we want to be. Uh, you know, we want to we want to conquer more and uh, we want to have 
you know, achieve the goals that we have set us. I think in one interview, you had actually mentioned, you said something like, if you give refugees a chance, they can contribute and make society better. So did you feel like, you know, upon, uh, obviously this is many, many years ago, but have, did you feel there was always, you know, just having to do the little extra bit to be accepted? Or um, did you see that with your sisters as well? Yeah. Um, yeah um, I think in general, it's not about refugees. It's just about human beings. Uh, I think every human being deserves a second chance, no matter who you are, no matter what, you know. Um, especially, I think we as humans should have more empathy towards people who are in need, the ones laying down. You want to give them a helping hand. And then and, and to your question regarding to if we had to do a bit extra. Yeah, definitely. Uh, imagining your race, it's 100 meter long and everyone else is already around 50 meters and then you, you're allowed to start running. Um, and we knew this. And then I think that's also been one of the forces in, you know, in pushing you forwards and trying to prove yourself, trying to show people that it's you're a human being as well. And then you deserve to be here. And then actually you can, as you said, contribute to the society and actually you can have an impact. And, and, and that's also one of the reasons that I, I do speak about myself and my story, my family, is to show people that you know, given a chance, everyone can shine. And I actually wanted to, um, of course, we'll get into Afghanistan and the situation there in a bit. But I also wanted to ask, you know, uh, you're a woman in, in, in football, in sport, mm. and you're also a refugee. And recently I saw you had replied to a tweet by Piers Morgan, over a controversial um, headline in a new UK newspaper called The Sun, where they yeah. said some very disparaging remarks about the Chelsea women's uh, football team. And, you know, we're seeing this now in 2021, these disparaging remarks made about the way women sound uh, during sport. Does it, have you ever encountered sort of a double discrimination being also, you know, one a woman and a woman of color as well? My God, if I have, of course I have, you know, uh, all my life. And then, you know, it's, as you said, being a woman nowadays, no matter where you are, obviously it's kind of great, you know, being in Denmark where everyone's trying, trying to have equality, uh, have the same opportunities, but mm -hmm. still we're very far away from it. Uh, but better than most places you compare, you still experience these stuff. And, 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 you know, you, I had to fight double to get the same respect for what I'm doing. Um, the same acknowledgement, the same outcome of the sport that I, me and my male colleague do. Um, so for me, this fight's always been there. And then you add on top of that, me being looking different than all the Danish national team players, um, dark in the skin and speaking probably differently having a different attitude towards things it's all been hard um, um so it's, it hasn't been busy uh, easy but that's just life that's just the cards you've been dealt with and, and you always I, I feel you always have an option um you can either sit down and cry about what's happening or you can take up the fight and try to change it and 99 percent of the time i choose take out the fight and then try to adjust it and try to create awareness and try to teach people this is not right you actually do hurt people those feelings and what you're saying is wrong um and then the one percent of the time i just give up because people are, are yeah not teachable i guess <laughs> and uh, this is a little tangential but you apparently you speak 11 languages one of which is hindi uh, I Hindi Turti Siati Hai. Uh, I'm a bohat, bohat Bollywood fan. Hu. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I sab Hindi songs ko Janti Hu. I sab Bollywood movies me deka hai. So, it's me Turti Siati Hai. Who's your favorite actor or actress? Um, or a recent film you saw? Um, I have so many. I would say, obviously, I was raised with the Hans. I love, uh, you know, Shah Rukh Khan, Salman Khan, Amir Khan. I think they're amazing. 
Uh, I love one of my favorite, all time favorite quotes, and I use it all the time. It's Shao Khan's where he says, Bri, bri, they show me it's a choti choti, but they hotel it, senorita. I love that, the mm-hmm. attitude, you know. Um, I always really love Ranveer Singh. I think he's an amazing actor, um, you know, Bajwan Mastani movies. I have watched it a hundred times. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I watch all of them, every movie that comes out, you know, I, I'm on it. Um, and that's the songs. My- I don't see the comment section is going to be flooded with these. Oh, that's funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And one of my all time favorite song that I've been listening and I have it when I'm in the gym running, I a minimum once I have to listen. It is like Sama Khan's Oh, oh Johnny Diana. Oh, yeah. I love that song. So, you know what? Um, in general, I think the Indian culture is amazing. I love the color. The I don't know. It makes me happy every time I see it. Um, it gives you this, this, the joy towards life. You know, I appreciate that. Uh, I think life is short and it should be experienced with love. And I, I think this is what I get out when I watch uh, Indian movies or, or I get in touch with the culture. Uh, and then, as I said, I try to zoom in as much as I can. I would love to visit India one day. I haven't had the time yet. My mom went, she was loving it, um, but I haven't had time yet. So one day. <laughs> uh, hope you come very soon, post-pandemic, of course. Yeah, but, of course. Um, now, if we can talk about something maybe a little more uh, morbid, shall I say, as we know, the situation in Afghanistan has dramatically changed since the Taliban take over in last August. Since then, we've seen sort of a return to oppressive policies, especially towards women. And um, recently, I think about two or three days ago, many Afghan women in Kabul uh, protested against a poster campaign launched by the Taliban, encouraging mm-hmm. women to wear a burqa or hijab. Um, so my question is, does it give you some hope to see that women are still raising their voice, still protesting, albeit in the capital? Um, or do you see the situation as still very futile? Um, no, I think, you know, it gives me hope and it give, it makes me happy to see there are women, strong women standing towards uh, the Taliban regime and trying to change things. As I, as I mentioned before, if there's something you're not happy about, you have to raise your voice and you have to address the issue. And this is the way you can do it. And nowadays with social media surrounding you know it's, it's actually you can actually have an impact no matter how many people you are you can have you have a voice and seeing that makes me very very proud and you know uh, I think women Afghan women are very strong uh, you know they've been going through a lot I know this from my mom and you know obviously my life as well um, and, and I know they're they have this this fire um, and, and I think if any who, who could change the situation, uh, I'll, I'll say it's them. It's the Afghan women who can, yeah, bring a bit more peace or more rights uh, to, Af- to Afghan people. This might be a long shot, but what do you think about the future of women's football in Afghanistan? Um, I know a lot of the Afghan um, male and women players. Uh, I know that a lot of them fled the country um, and or in US, Australia, uh, Portugal. As it looks right now, the hopes are, you know, there's not a lot of hope. But but I think in the future, uh, I hope that the country, you know, there's going to be peace in the country and then school education and sports are something that everyone has access to. Um, that's my hopes and, and, and you know my dreams I, I I really hope so for now I don't know uh, what's going to happen this is yeah tough tough to predict I guess so just a final question what what would be your message to um, maybe young girls across the world in sport um, especially you know the ones in war-torn countries. I know you've spoken a lot about how having sport in refugee camps is really important. It 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 is like a critical way to sort of keep that joy, that innocence, that yeah. um, childhood, you know, um, love and care 
and then put it, put all of that into sport. Um, what would you uh, what message would you have along these lines? Um, yeah, I think you know sports and education. I think there are two tools that you can use to change your situation. Uh, and this is not for only kids, young girls. It's in general everyone. And my message is always to have big dreams and might look impossible at the moment when you look at it right now you you cannot see a way out but that's where the, your dream comes in you know i think it always starts as a dream i was a refugee kid in a camp i've never played football really and i didn't even knew women's professional football existed my first initial reaction was that i want to be a footballer i want to play for real madrid barcelona pg man city 20 later i was there so it starts with a dream and and if you have dream you can turn those dreams into your goals by working very, very hard towards those dreams. And um, so remember always to dream big because it's free, you know, and you never know what might happen. Thank you so much, Nadia. Um, that was a wonderful message. And all the best to you as well. Um, starting a new chapter as a qualified doctor and as well as with your football career. And thank you for taking out the time to speak to the print. Thank you. It was my pleasure and good luck with everything.